What is a landfill? A landfill is where trash and waste are buried. It is different than a dump, which is usually a pit or pile of garbage uncovered where animals and birds can pick at the debris. A landfill is designed in or on the ground with a liner in place to prevent contamination with the surrounding environment. The liner is clay for a sanitary landfill and plastic in a municipal solid waste landfill, or MSW. The material in a landfill is not exposed to air and is kept dry and covered with soil, so there is not much chance of decay. Before building a landfill, there are steps to be followed, beginning with an environmental impact study. The study covers determining the amount of land needed, the ground structure, surface water in the area, how it will fit into the location's habitat, and the impact it could have on the surroundings. In addition to having a large area for the landfill itself, where the materials are collected, a working landfill could have collection ponds, drop-off stations, and buffer areas. The bedrock underlying a landfill site should be sound, and locations should not be near mines, quarries, or gravel pits, since those could lead to problems, because of the access to the underground water supply. The effect on wildlife and any historical or archaeological significance is also considered. After an environmental impact study is completed, the appropriate permits are secured. A landfill is designed to handle trash without polluting, with cells that hold a compressed day's trash, adequate drainage, and collection ponds for treatment. The gas byproduct produced is approximately half methane and half carbon dioxide with a little bit of nitrogen and oxygen. Since methane gas is combustible, this landfill gas must be eliminated and is usually removed through pipes. It can then be burned, or the methane can be reused as a fuel where appropriate. Monitoring is ongoing, even after a landfill is shut down. The monitoring of it and the groundwater around it will continue for decades to ensure there are no leaks. If leaks develop, they must be addressed immediately. Hazardous waste. Hazardous waste is something that can be dangerous or has the potential to harm people or the environment. It can come from a number of different sources, such as industrial manufacturing, and can be in liquid, solid, gas, or sludge form. This waste might be from used commercial products, such as pesticides, or cleaning solvents, or from manufacturing residuals. Brownfield Sites and a Brief History A brownfield site is one that has, or might have, the presence of a hazardous substance or contaminant. These sites are often abandoned, out of service, or neglected commercial or industrial locations which become unsightly and filled with debris. Abandoned buildings present many dangers, some obvious and others more difficult to detect. The obvious include broken windows, rotting structure, and rusty metal pipes. However, toxic chemicals might also be present. A brownfield site is determined not only by the fact that it is or could be contaminated, but by the potential of the property to be reclaimed and developed to achieve its highest and best use. Highest and best use takes into account the physical characteristics, the zoning, and any other regulations that would lead to the property's most valuable state, monetarily and socially. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, estimates there are 450,000 brownfields in the USA. Rather than let them linger, it makes much better sense to clean them up and redevelop these properties into new businesses, parks, and other productive uses. The Comprehensive Environmental Response, 
Compensation and Liability Act, CERCLA, generally referred to as the Superfund, was a federal program established in 1980 to clean up locations where pollutants were, or could be, hazardous. The law stipulated that the owners, past and present, were responsible for the cleanup costs, whether they had knowledge of the contamination or not. The harsh liability put a damper on whether people wanted to acknowledge possible contaminated land or do anything about it. Instead of spurring cleanup, many sites sat vacant as no one wanted to touch them. In order to increase participation in cleanup, six years later, Congress added the Innocent Landowner Defense to ease the burden for property owners who did not previously know about the hazard issues, provided they performed appropriate due diligence when they purchased. This usually means having an Environmental Site Assessment, or ESA, done by a licensed environmental professional. The ESA first looks at the history of the use of the property to see if there needs to be further investigation. If so, the next step is to find out more through soil tests, water samples, even excavation. If additional problems are found, a plan is made to remediate the site. In the 1990s, the EPA gave seed money to local governments for Brownfield's pilot projects, and the states began addressing the minor sites. However, there were still fears about liability that kept many property owners or prospective buyers from becoming involved. The Small Business Liability Relief and Brownfields Revitalization Act, or Brownfields Law, was signed into law in 2002 to promote redevelopment with federal funding and to encourage landowners to come forward by enacting protections for parties who clean up property using the state Brownfields criterion. The emphasis is on cleanup, since property owners who know about potential contamination cannot avoid liability simply by selling the property. Buyers who were interested in Brownfields properties, which occurs most often in industrialized states with a limited amount of property available for new development, were still concerned about purchasing. Without any protection, buyers would shy away from such properties due to liability concerns, and the property would continue to sit dormant, becoming an eyesore and potential hazard to the area. To encourage renovation, part of the Brownfields Acts has a bona fide prospective purchaser liability defense for those buyers. To qualify, they must meet specific criteria, but it makes it more attractive for buyers to move forward with redevelopment. With land availability becoming scarce in some desirable locations, interest in revitalizing brownfield sites has grown. It's good economics to take abandoned property and reclaim it for a better use. The Brownfields Act provides for money for brownfield site assessment and remedy on the federal and state levels. Grants are also available through the EPA and the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, to help with environmental assessments and remediation. State and tribal response programs are the lead agencies for cleaning up and renewing these sites. There are many examples where this has been done with great success. Here are three. In Shreveport, Louisiana, after 25 years of being abandoned, the city realized the property could be an excellent location for a Shreveport Convention Center. When environmental investigations were conducted, several contaminants were found and they were at dangerous levels. Using private and public funding, over 38,000 cubic yards of soil, 42,000 gallons of fuel, oil, and water, two underground storage tanks, USTs, three oil-slash-gas wells, and two natural gas storage basins were removed, excavated, and disposed of, creating 1,100 related jobs. 
the once deadly site became a 350,000 square foot convention center, the largest one in Louisiana. Another example is in Moorhead, Minnesota. Nearly six acres had once been used as a petroleum filling station, dry cleaner, automotive repair shop, electric motor manufacturing facility, foundry, and paint shop. Using a $400,000 Brownfields assessment grant, the city launched a revitalization project for the central city corridor of Moorhead. An assessment turned up soil and groundwater contamination and lead best paint and asbestos in the dilapidated buildings. They removed 12,000 cubic yards of toxic soil and employed nine full-time workers and 29 part-time jobs. The redevelopment included preserving two historic structures, creating a bridgehead plaza and a 30-unit apartment building. In another case, some Oakland, California property that had long been used for commercial and industrial businesses became part of a larger redevelopment project called the Uptown Initiative. With the help of Brownfield's assessment and cleanup grants, the property was restored and redeveloped. Over 9,400 tons of contaminated soil was removed, and 80 affordable housing units were built to fit in with the overall residential redevelopment plan. As a real estate agent, it's crucial to know about the local, state, and federal laws concerning waste disposal sites, landfills, and brownfields. Since there are favorable financial incentives possible for developing brownfield sites, you may find yourself working with a buyer who is specifically interested in purchasing such property. To become familiar with your area or community, you can find out more at the EPA site, Cleanups in My Community, which will sort information on all types of cleanups or just certain ones, by location or EPA region. Check with the city to see what has been identified and how they promote the locations. If your buyer is serious, suggest they bring in a qualified environmental professional to run an ESA. Encourage your buyer or seller to consult the appropriate specialists and legal experts when necessary to make sure every party in the transaction is informed, liability is minimized, and all incentive programs, including tax advantages, are used.